John Simmons was in a bad mood that day due to various aggravations such as the poor weather, the migraine headache and all the issues he faced at work. It only made his troubles seem larger. He took another look at the accounting reports, trying to figure out why his business's income had been so low over the past month. After years at the helm, John was baffled by the minuscule profits his restaurant was yielding. Though it had many devoted customers, both locals and tourists alike, it seemed as though something wasn't adding up, particularly since it was located in a prime spot downtown. With confusion, he realized why the restaurant was losing money and why it was in severe financial trouble. To gain further insight, he asked to speak with the manager who had been running the restaurant for the past three months, Amanda. When she entered his office, he beckoned her in to discuss further. We need to have a serious conversation. John called opening the door to his office. Soon enough, a brown-haired woman with long legs appeared in front of him. She looked at her boss, questioningly. Do you need something? Amanda asked, smiling Mr. Simmons grimace as she came in and gestured for her to take a seat. The only reason John let Amanda speak to him in that tone was because Amanda was also his lover. Essentially, this is how she secured the managing position at the restaurant, which was now suffering losses probably due to her negligence. Mr. Simmons showed her a three-month report. He didn't expect Amanda's astonishment and for her to say she knew nothing about the loss. She's lying. She must be. I can see it in her eyes. John thought to himself. He chose not to make any assumptions out loud. All things considered, John enjoyed his relationship with Amanda. He felt loved and desired when he was with her. All that John asked for was complete anonymity and secrecy. Thus, he always behaved markedly cold around Amanda in public and never gave anyone reason to suspect that he had feelings for. Amanda didn't get her position as restaurant manager just for being John's lover. In addition to helping with the business itself, Amanda was constantly spying on his staff. This slide girl would meticulously record each compromising fact on her co-workers that she picked up. Thanks to her, John knew that the busboy would secretly take leftovers from the kitchen to homeless animals at the shelter. He also knew that the chef would cook frozen meat and served it as a first-rate veal with the hefty price. For the most part, these misdeeds didn't cause much damage to the restaurant, but wouldn't combine. They can easily explain why the profits were shrinking. After reviewing the data in Amanda's notebook, John gathered the entire step in the lobby and began reprimanding each of the employees one by. As this was happening, none of his employees could understand where Mrs. Simmons was getting this information from. The staff looked at each other suspiciously, but had no idea that the blame belonged on Amanda, who was smiling slightly and licking her lips. At the end of his fury speech, John added, that he would be penalizing each employee with the deduction from their salaries corresponding to the damage they had. There, that's better thought the man and looked at his employees with satisfaction. After this incident, most of the employees lowered their eyes and went about their lives. For some, it meant figuring out how to pay off their next credit card bill. For someone else, it was taking care of their sick mother. The problems that John's employees faced didn't concern him much. He just wanted to get his due earnings and spend it on a vacation with a pretty girl-like. By his forties, Mr. Simmons considered himself a true bachelor, and he thought it was impossible for him to get married at this point. That said, this didn't keep John from having occasional flings with all kinds of women. After dishing out punishments to the employees, Mr. Simmons glanced at his watch and gasped, Oh my God, I have an appointment with Anthony R., whispered John and held his head in his hands. Those two had known each other since college when they defended the honor of their hometown playing for the school's soccer team. Anthony, like John, was a middle-class businessman who owned a small construction company. The old friends would meet from time to time and reminisce over a glass of drink in a cozy bar, and that's what they had planned for that day. But John had completely forgotten all about it all because of the problems at the restaurant. He fixed his tie, threw his jacket over his shoulder, and went into the street to catch a cab. As John had suspected, his friend was already waiting for him at the bar. Anthony was already sitting with a glass of drink in his hand, which made him look calm and composed. Oh my God. John, what happened? You look like hell, Anthony exclaimed throwing his arms around his friend. All right, all right, let's talk business later. 
John answered evasively and sat down at the table soon. They both got you talking about all kinds of things, but avoiding uncomfortable topics. When the conversation started getting more serious, John voiced his concerns. Yeah, man, I guess things are really bad for you. I think I can help you, though. Anthony said thoughtfully scratching the back of his head. What? How could you help me if you don't know anything about restaurant? You're an expert in construction, but when it comes to a cuisine, you wouldn't be able to sell a fork from a spoon, said John, who took his friend's offer as a joke. No, no. You misunderstood me. The truth is I know someone who can help you. It doesn't come cheap, but the effect is amazing, said Anthony as he began going through his notebook, trying to find the right phone number. When he finally found the number, he handed it to his friend Beverly Hopkins. A woman, huh? John grudgingly reached out, peering closely at what was written on the paper. And, um, a woman. Not only that, she also served seven years behind bars in county jail. That being said, there's no better specialist in the field than Beverly. She only takes on the toughest cases. Cases like yours, Anthony said. Well, I don't care if she's a death row inmate, as long as she can help me with my problem, John answered. Hopefully, the drink they had consumed took its effect soon, and the two friends started jumping from topic to topic and spending the rest of the evening reminiscing about their past. When the night ended, Anthony and John hugged and promised each other that they'd meet up again in a week. John didn't really remember the end of that evening and all the drink that he had drunk took its toll. He didn't even remember how he made it to his bed that whole night. He was tormented by nightmares of the past, nightmares of those days when he took his first steps in the world of business. Back then, John Simmons had committed something so shameful that he swore he'd never think of it again. That day, though, the drink loosened his memory up and forced him to relive those unpleasant moments. The next morning, John awoke feeling as if his body were completely tormented by the hangover. John got up, got dressed, and went to the restaurant that day. He had an appointment with this woman who was supposed to sort out all of his problems. Beverly Hopkins turned out to be a pleasant woman in her 40s, dressed in an elegant business suit and high heels. John couldn't help but feel that her face was somehow familiar to him, but he couldn't remember where and when he had seen her before as his head was still spinning from the night. Beverly patiently listened to the businessman's messy story and volunteered to help. Mrs. Hopkins only had one question. She requested that while she worked, John wouldn't interfere with the business in any way. Simply put, John had to stay away from the restaurant for at least a couple of weeks. That's some great service. It's been a long time since I've taken a vacation. I guess I'll take Amanda and go relax on some. John Simmons thought with a happy smile. Having accepted Mrs. Hopkins' condition, the happy businessman hurried to find his lover to break the good news to her. Needless to say, Amanda was thrilled with the offer. The two weeks they spent in the atmosphere of a pleasant holiday on the islands blew by in the blink of an eye on the way back to his hometown. John couldn't wait to see how his restaurant had transformed, and it did change beyond recognize. When the businessman came to the parking lot out front, he didn't see a single car, which meant that there were no customers and no employees there. What's going on? What are those burns? I swear to God, if they don't show up right now, I'll fire them all, no exceptions. John shouted as he got out of the cozy saloon of a Chevrolet. Suddenly, the door of the restaurant swung open and Beverly Hopkins appeared on the doorstep. Why are you screaming, Mr. Simmons? You don't have to fire anybody. I took that liberty upon myself a while back, said the woman with a charming smile. What then? Who's working at the restaurant and why aren't there any customers inside? John asked, stunned. Your restaurant isn't open. It's been closed for two weeks. You've also taken a few orders from weddings and parties, and trust me, they all came from very wealthy people. I made sure of that. And now you won't have enough money to pay the penalties for not fulfilling your obligations. Beverly said, what have you done? My business? It's ruined, John said under his breath, bringing his hands to his head. Beverly only smiled. In response, she reminded the businessman of the incident that happened ten years earlier when he had framed her and sent her to prison for a long seven-year sentence. Back then, Beverly and John had been mere companions taking a chance at starting a business from scratch. As the business started picking up, John Simmons decided to take all the assets for himself. 
To do this, he framed Beverly of tax evasion. Thus, the trusting woman ended up in jail and John filed for bankruptcy. When he got his hands on all the cash, he opened up his own restaurant and now standing right before the sly businessman was the very same Beverly years past and Beverly had changed her name and entire image to the point where she was virtually unrecognizable. That day, Beverly was the angel of vengeance who had come to punish her dishonest partner. Once he realized that he was on the verge of bankruptcy, John fell to his knees and wept bitterly, but his tears had no effect on Beverly Hawkins. She had been waiting for this moment for ten long years. Justice had prevailed. Beverly smiled to herself with the click of her heels. She went on towards her new life in which there would be no more deceit and no more dishonest partner.